get the analysis. We're joined by William Golston. William is Senior Fellow at the Brookings Institution. William Golston, always a pleasure to have you here in France 24. Thank you for joining us. Um, we need some guidance here. What happens next in your view? What happens next on Capitol Hill? Well, we know some of the very next steps. Uh, there will be a meeting of the House Republicans next Tuesday night at which all of the candidates uh, will, for the speakership, will present their plans, you know, their strategy for pulling the party back together. Uh, they have scheduled a vote, and I suspect that it will be a series of votes, uh, for Wednesday. Uh, and that's where the real fork in the road occurs. If the Republicans can succeed in unifying enough to elect a new speaker from their ranks alone, then they will do so. And we will then have a return to the situation that existed uh, before Mr. McCarthy was ousted. If they can't, they may have to look across party lines for the support they need, and that would generate an entirely new dynamic and perhaps even a coalition speakership for the first time in American history. There is never a dull moment, and you've perfectly illustrated why this is such an historic moment indeed, a first possible coalition speakership. Now, of course, it's worth remembering, I think, that McCarthy himself elected back in January to the role of speaker, but that took like 15 attempts to get him there, didn't it? It wasn't a straightforward event. And obviously replacing him is going to be equally complicated. Uh, whether it will go the 15 ballots that it took past it back in January, I'm not sure. But I would be amazed if anybody if anybody uh, prevailed on the first ballot. Uh, but there's a deeper issue here, and that is that the promises that Kevin McCarthy was forced to make back in January in order to get elected speaker, in particular the rules changes that allowed a single member of the Republican caucus to bring the motion to vacate the chair that ultimately passed and expelled him from the speakership, whether anybody would be willing to take the speakership without a change in those rules is, I think, a fundamental question here, because otherwise uh, the new speaker would be just as powerless as Mr. McCarthy was and just as vulnerable to attack from a small, determined fringe of opponents. But in order to get the rules changed, if that small fringe doesn't want a change in the rules, there will have to be a discussion with the Democrats. Uh, and so this is, you know, th this is a fork in the road that's coming up for the entire House of Representatives as early as next week. But if the Republicans can't figure out a way of turning a numerical majority into a governing majority, then the institution as a whole will remain as dysfunctional as it has been for the past nine months. This is serious stuff, isn't it? William, my friend, tell me this, um, or clarify this for me in particular. I can't work out whether this is a symbol of how democracy works in the US or how it's not working, what is actually happening right now. But what is clear, I think, is that this is going to stymie the government and things that the government needs to do. And that is a serious issue, isn't it? Well, it is certainly going to delay those things. Whether it stymies them remains to be seen. But talk about serious issues. Aid to Ukraine is hanging in the balance, which certainly explains why the president will go on national television, belatedly in my judgment, uh, in an effort to bolster support for it. Uh, there are signs at various levels that grassroots support among Republicans for continued aid to Ukraine is declining alarming. But there are lots of other things. Uh, for example, the funding of the government. We averted one shutdown, uh, but there's another one coming up in just 44 days, and the two parties are very far apart on the best, on the right way of funding the government. And not only that, uh, the Republicans in the Senate are not in agreement with the Republicans in the House on how the government should be uh, allowed to remain open and functioning. So uh, there are a lot of very serious issues that are stalled unless and until there's a new speaker. William, I'm sorry, we need to leave it there, but I think there are so many more questions I'd love to ask you, so maybe we'll get a chance to talk uh, over the next couple of days about this issue, which isn't going to go away quickly. William Golston from the Brookings Institution, thank you once again for joining us here on France 24. We appreciate your time and your analysis. My, William my Golston, pleasure. thank you, sir, very much indeed.